Hey guys, welcome back to Ring Still TV. Today we're going to do a, a quick video on my uh, case annealer here. Um, one of my subscribers, in fact, my very first subscriber, Nathan Boyce, uh, whose YouTube channel will be linked below in the description, uh, was asking about this unit and wanted to see uh, just a quick video on how it works. So I think what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to do an overview of this unit. And uh, I had planned actually to do a build on a unit very similar to this for you guys. It's super easy to do and, and uh, it, it won't take a lot of money to do. This particular case annealer, um, basically it has this auto feed over here on the right hand side where you can load up. I can't even remember. I think it's a hundred or so rounds of whatever I'm, I'm, I'm putting in there. Uh, in this case, I've got uh, six millimeter Creedmoor loaded up. Uh, basically it auto feeds it to here. Uh, you can probably see back in the corner this little orange deal that's a proximity sensor. So when there's a um, shell in that, that area, it actually stops this from turning. And then the uh, wheel here is just a, it's just a cake pan. I can't remember. I think it's a six inch cake pan that uh, I've kind of cut and uh, put on there. It's a little strip of angle iron. And then of course the, uh, the um, burner, this is a benzomatic burner um, that I got off of, of eBay and a few little odds and ends to kind of keep it going. Uh, there's a motor in the back that's controlled by PWM. Uh, and this is all bought on, on uh, Amazon. Uh, and you can control the RPM. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on and let you guys see kind of how it works. Um, I'm not actually uh, having any propane going in it right now. Uh, just, just to show you the, how, how this thing works. So you can see here it loads. It goes to the, PW, uh, to the uh, proximity sensor and stops. This, now that's loaded up, it'll load the next one into place. And, uh, and then the, it would be burning, or it would be uh, heating up the case. You can see this go in. You can speed it up. You can see over here, you can slow it down. And you can see here, I'm having to kind of push it against the proximity sensor. I need to put a little rail in there or something to help it push it back. So this takes a little bit of manual process. You, you can't just set this and walk away from it. You really should sit here and watch it. This cake pan I usually have um, set up with water in it. And um, so once they heat up and they drop out of here, they'll hit the water. As far as temperature on this, what I usually do is uh, I'll run this at night with all the lights off if I haven't run one of these before. Um, so I already know the setting for my, um, for my six millimeter Creedmoor. So I just set it to... 26 and and that's the right setting for the six millimeter creedmoor but let's say it's a brand new round like recently i did those um 300 wind mags the case wall was a little thicker and so i ended up going with uh 21 on the dial here um well, the first time i set it up what i'll do is i'll turn all the lights off uh this will run inside the pan itself and i'll watch the case neck and the moment that it starts to get just a little bit red like a dull red of the case that's when I know that's got enough time. So I'll adjust it until I get a dull redness in there. That should be about 700 degrees on uh, brass. Now, if you turn your neck, turn your necks, or if your neck wall thickness, thicknesses are different from brass slot to brass slot, obviously you're gonna have to go back and tweak it. It's only within a few points that you'll have to tweak it with. So this is, this is kind of how that works. Um, I'll show you guys real quick, uh, kind of what we've done here is I, I did show you this proximity sensor. This is just an extension cord, uh, extension gas deal with a valve that goes to the uh, benzomatic um, the, the propane tank. And then they sold this um, online here to hold it on the side. I just screwed that to the side. Um, if you look on the back side of this, I've got it all open for you. There is a uh, little power supply down here and uh, converts everything to 12 volt. Uh, then I've got two of these um, uh, gear reduction motors on here. Both of these are also from uh, Amazon. Um, and then this is the uh, motor controller and this has uh, PWM in, inside of it and it, it comes with the uh, dial and the on off button and everything that you need to set it up. So no complexity there. And then here is a uh, the um, proximity sensor and that just plugs in line where with the power on off so it, it turns it on off. It's, it's a very simple design. 
there's nothing complicated about this. And then I had some leftover oak and I just built this little case. You can see here from the side, I think you can see here from the side, it's angled a little bit uh, so, that the, uh, so that the brass kind of stays both in this channel and also into, into here, uh, it stays in there. I've been able to do, uh, like I said, I did the 300 wind mag. Um, in fact, I've got some brass right up here. Let me just grab it. With the 300 wind mag, because it was so long, it didn't quite fit in here very good. So what I have to do is just lean it back a little bit, just put a little piece of wood down at the bottom of this, just to lean it back a little bit, and then it was fine. I didn't have any issues after that. Uh, this 300 wind mag was also too big for this slot in here, so it wouldn't feed it correctly, so I just had to manually feed it. And the version I'm going to show you guys is not going to have any of this auto feeder on here. I'm just going to have this rail and this cake pan and this burner here. To be honest with you guys, it's just as simple to load one at a time. You have to monitor this anyway. And uh, I really wasn't happy with the proximity sensor. It's just not, it's not reliable enough because I have to push this every time, or a lot of times I have to push the case back here against the proximity sensor. Um, and I've got the proximity sensor all the way flush. So uh, I think one thing I'm gonna try and do is build some kind of little rail or put some electrical tape here in the front. I think if I get the brass at an angle just a little bit, it'll push it back into that a little better. So I'll play with that. I've been, I built this, uh, I built this two years ago. Um, and it's worked great. I've not had any issues. Um, whether or not annealing your brass actually makes your brass um, more um, accurate, I don't really know. I haven't had a lot of opportunity to do a side-by-side -side comparison of annealed brass versus unannealed brass. What I will tell you is the brass lasts longer if you anneal it. I don't have any more uh, case cracks around the neck, and uh, I can get a few more loads out of every one of these if I anneal it every time. The other thing is if I kneel it every time, I'm guaranteed to know that the brass is exactly the same. Every time I go and load it, you know, it's not going to be work hardened or a little bit harder this time than it was last time. It'll always be the same. So that's why I built that case annealer. Anyway, I just wanted to do this really quick video, a little bonus video this week for you guys. Uh, Nate asked about this. He, and again, his uh, channel is linked down below. He does a uh, some car stuff. He does uh, some machining and things like that. You guys might find all that interesting. So anyway, thanks for watching and happy shooting.